Hello everyone. I know it's been a few weeks since I last posted. I'm sorry about that. I'm a bit of a digital nomad so I move around a lot. I was in Paris when I shot the last video and between coming back to Spain and some projects that are going on right now, it's been a little bit busy. I've had some requests to create a v-stitcher to blender workflow video. This will be a two or three part video because the process is a little long and I want to make it as clear as possible for you guys. I do have to say though that I will not be teaching you how to use the blender interface. It's very different from v -Stitcher and the two softwares can't really be compared I so I highly suggest taking a blender course before you start working in it or else you might just get a little bit frustrated it was hard for me to find a good beginners course on blender when I was learning so finally the one that I really liked was the essentials one that's on LinkedIn learning you do have to pay $30 a month for LinkedIn learning but I, I think it's worth it to just sign up take the course and then cancel when you're done um, I'll link the course below if you're interested in that once once you know the basics of Blender and what the different windows are and the different functions do, you can basically follow along any YouTube tutorial that you find. You, Blender has been around for so long and there are so many expert users in it that the resources online are really limitless and what you can do with Blender is really limitless. Like you can create anything, you can create an entire world basically. Um, I was an artist before I was a fashion designer so I love to be able to design something in v-stitcher using my technical background and then transfer it to blender to create an artistically beautiful scene to render it in. With all of that being said, let's jump into part one. So I have a garment created for this tutorial. It's this pink dress and I applied a cotton works fabric to it. Later on when I zoom in you'll see the really nice texture and I also put my um, avatar into a bit of a dramatic pose for the scene that I'm going to create. And we're going to export her as an OBJ file. So we're going to go to file, export. You want to find a location to save the file, name it, and from the drop down select OBJ. And you can include the avatar with the export if you want. I usually include the outside inside geometry and I keep the scale as one. Then we want to bake the textures. The DPI, I do sometimes put it down a little bit because it depends on how much space I have on my computer memory. So um, it, it helps me to bring it down a little bit. We want to do single UV layout for all pieces, up axis and export. The, up ac the Y axis, um, I set it to Y because if you keep it at Z, you, your avatar might come in the wrong orientation and then you might have to adjust it in Blender. So it exports an OBJ file, the material file, a folder with all the materials. As you can see here, you've got the avatar and the garment materials. And when I open up Blender, you've got the default cube, the camera and the light. We're going to delete the default cube. We're going to say file import for the OBJ file. And when you initially bring it in, the scale is very large. So we have to scale her down. So select her and then scale her down proportionately. And right now she's in this, in the viewport shading, she's in the solid mode. We're going to save. I like to save often just in case, you know, any crashes happen for any reason. So now that you've got her scale, just make sure you save the blend file. We've got her in solid mode, so you've also got the, the preview textures, and but I'm going to work in the rendered textures. And you can see that nice texture of the fabric. So we do need to fix her eyelashes and her hair. So I'm going to open a split screen up put it into the shader editor so I can see all of the nodes for my materials and we're going to go to the eyelash material connect the alpha node to the alpha and then we're going to change the blend mode if you scroll down to alpha blend now her eyelashes look good we're going to do the same thing for the hair change the blend mode For the skin, we'll connect the alpha nodes, but you don't want to change the blend mode and you'll see why. Because you, you want to keep it opaque or else you're going to see through her skin. We don't want that. Then you have the um, inside texture materials and the outside materials. 
and usually if your materials come in very flat you might you know want to play with the roughness um, a little bit value a little bit and the specular my my material already has a um, a, an image for the specular so I don't need to adjust that and I, I think we really don't need to do anything to mine but if yours come in flat and you want to play around with those settings you can to make it look to your liking save again and we're gonna create a we're gonna start with creating the scene I'm gonna add a cube mesh and I'm gonna scale it up I'm going to put it into edit mode and get rid of that top face so we can see inside. And move it up to where I want it. And since she's kind of in this dramatic floating pose, we're going to move her up like she is floating. And right now it's an EV. Um, I do like to mostly render in cycles. We'll, in the next tutorial, I will go over those two render settings later. And I've got my camera, which is on the outside of the cube. So I would want to move it inside and then put it in the camera view. So, because this is where the rendered image is going to show and I'm just um, moving it to where I want it to, rotating it the way I want. And I'm also changing the resolution. I'm creating that square format for Instagram. And then I'm moving the camera around to I'm just playing with really finding a cool layout for for this image so this you know you take your time to get something that you like you don't need to rush and you and so if you don't want a um, cube you can also create a sphere just add more segments and rings to it so it's a little bit smoother i'm going to change the radius and i'm putting it in my y view so i can see it from straight from the side put it back into edit mode select all the vertices on the top half and delete them I'm sure there's an easier way to do this, but I'm no, by no means a Blender expert, but we're hoping to get there someday. So I think this is a good place to stop for now. You've got your initial steps for exporting your garment from vStitcher and adjusting the textures in Blender. I will show you some good resources for lighting, textures, and objects in the next video. That was the end of part one. I hope that you were able to pick up some tips from this video and are excited for the next steps. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or what you are hoping to see in the next parts. Subscribe to get notified on new uploads or simply to support my work. Thank you and see you next time.